Uh, hello, anyone who may be watching now or later. Uh, <laughs> I almost did start the old intro again. And welcome to, well, uh, oh, hello, the, the health. How the hell did that happen? Did, okay, uh, yeah, this is how this is how Technomates typically looks with this. And it's not supposed to, or it's that's how it looks to me at least. Uh, let's hide those for a quick bit. Did it get... Did it lose its cropping or something? Or... Oh, wait, I think I know what might have happened. Uh, let's see. Transform. Edit transform. Uh, yeah, I see what happened. I forgot to change... I copied over... Uh, I copied over a transform from a different thing, which, well, has led to the borders getting caught on this. So, give me a bit to try and fix that. I... Should have tested that beforehand. This should just be a pretty quick thing and we'll do a bit of extra time for this. Uh, yeah, definitely going oh, to need to be yeah. more than that. Well, what do you fix that? Welcome everyone to Hasty Show. <laughs> Along Which stands with for Helium and... and... I'm doing the introduction <laughs> here, good sir. <laughs> Along with me, Drakir and my noble assistant, Helion. <laughs> Assistant. Okay, someone's not getting any flies today. But good, I prefer grubs. But <laughs> uh, yeah, let me try to quickly fix these borders to make it a bit less unseemly. I well, re removing the seams. A bit more there, and then a few on the sides and bottom. Yeah. I, should, I definitely should have tested that beforehand, and I think, yeah, that looks about good. Uh, one last, just remove, lower all by one, just to see if the border pops up. Sorry about this flashing back and forth. It looks like I was pixel perfect with these previously, so there we go. And now for the last time, hopefully... Oh, what is for the last time now? There we go. Back to... Uh, yeah. <clears throat> Welcome to... Uh, yeah, now I'm just completely flustered. Welcome back to Technomage Return of Eternity, where last time we got out of the hive and we found a very odd crystal, uh, which, <laughs> which gave Melvin a vision. <laughs> hey there, Noon. <laughs> Hope you're doing well. And uh, yeah, for that, let's tag on an extra five minutes today. We're streaming early anyways. And yeah, we arrived at the Fairy Fortress, which I think might take us quite a bit, especially since we can't seem to find these freaking young fairies that uh, we were told of. Hillian, hmm? I think you said that wrong. What, we need to find those three fairies in a fairy grove? No, no, no. You said fairy fortress. It's fairy forest. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's what happens when I start getting flustered because I screw things up. Wait, you mean you're always flustered? I get a good. Less flies. Actually, there's a little bit <laughs> to the left here that we haven't explored. I, Yeah, it's nothing. <laughs> Very unfortunate. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> he comes to ponds, but not from Helion this time. Okay, where is this freaking fairy grove? It's been all over oh, the place, dear. I think. Stonehenge this way. And again, we have missed... <laughs> we have missed... Uh, some things pretty easily before. But fairy Meadow, wait. Okay, so it is here. We just need to find where the hell they are in this area, then. Don't eat that. <laughs> no. Uh, let's see, we've already been here. Uh, here. Uh, those plants alive. Uh, there oh. remains of some of the plants that we've killed, the spitter ones. Uh, all right, uh, of those plants, a lot. All <laughs> plants are alive. Just 
different different form of life. Yeah, yeah. they do some some do smell like they are dead. Hmm. True. But yeah, flowers are life, people. Remember that. Life it's comes in many forms. Keys, I think. Don't we have an? Okay, we have a bron we have a copper key. So where can there? Here we can use that. Just as I'm about to ask. Oh, and more of these mantises. Who don't look like mantis. Yeah. Like I, I get idea. A kind of support what are people to reuse mod as such. As long as it's done well and where it makes sense. This one does not make sense. They just took a spider and popped a torso on top of it. Like, I feel like I thought they would go and ask them, but ask them, have they ever seen a mantis? Well, it could just be a standard, your standard magical wolf stuff where things are just plain different. It's, yeah, do they, usually it's, it shouldn't be extremely different. That they, there we go. Yeah, I kind of I find it sometimes annoying. Like, like when you call something, you name something a duck, but it looks clearly like a damn chicken. It's... Again, I usually had a bit of annoyance with Warcraft, like, the Vibons were basically manticores. I don't recall if that... Okay, those lily pads fall away when you jump away, it seems. I guess that last one lasted a bit There's longer. There's something wrong with the ground here. Yes, yes, Melville, we heard that the last five times. Uh-oh. And there's the last seal, which looks like it. At first, I wanted to say a donkey, but it's a deer. Or a horse. Uh, oh. <laughs> Close enough. I, I was thinking it's llama for some reason. Ah, uh, yes, that elusive creature, the forest llama. Now it's your mm. true llamas do enjoy forests. Uh, they have uh, wool, so I don't think they would, and here they are. Hello, brave boy. My name is Elabeth, and I have something rather special, because I can make you fairy gold. Have the other fairies told you about the jester who lives here in the forest? He's a really witty fellow, always ready for a joke. But not everyone can talk to him. You have to summon him first. But he likes to hide behind golden lights. And he's something special, too, because he knows all about herbs. And I think I see now what you mean with uh, the picture looking off. That's because they're, uh, the, depth, the depth on the hair is off, which makes it look like they just have a utterly massive forehead. That and the eyebrows, the eyes, and the sm smile. Uh, yeah, that's what those golden lights are for. It feels way off everything about the face. It's Hello. Awkward. Who are you then? I'm Tilly, and I'm a rather sad fairy at the moment because Duna, our druid who lives in Stonehenge, is very mad at me and my friends Bendia and Elabeth. Duna told us to get three seals shaped like animals from Jelen for her. But on the way back, we played hide and seek and quite forgot about the seals. Well, we lost all three in the forest. Anyway, mine looks like a little bird and must be somewhere near to Jackal the Bridge Troll. But I'm afraid to go and look for it because we're not allowed to go near Jackal since he became so aggressive. So what are we three to do? Duna won't talk to us until she has all three seals back again. Do you think you could find them for us? <laughs> we already have. <laughs> Oh no, I think I know another thing that sort of disturbed me. It, it, oh, they almost look like Nicolas Cage. <laughs> Nicolas Fairy. <laughs> yeah, that's probably why for the last person I want to see as a fairy is probably Nicolas Cage. He, he would not fit as a fairy at all. 
And now I want to see if someone would actually draw that, or ha probably already has drawn that. Oh dear. Yes, I'm one of Telly's friends, and boy is Duna mad at us. I've searched for the seal everywhere, but I can't find it. Mine must be on one of the little islands, I'm sure of it. Couldn't you find it and take it to Duna for me? I daren't go near her. Is it just me or the fairy dialogue is a bit off? Well, they are fairies, and this game was, well, you know, was translated from German first, most likely. Uh, true yeah. name, true. <laughs> Uh, like uh, one of the rules of the internet, if it exists, there will be uh, oh, weird ass. There will be weird ass fan art of it. <laughs> okay, th third times in the drink as well. Uh, fourth time then. Yeah, if you've been wondering, it says. This may not be on YouTube later. Noon in chat said everything has been drawn. If not, someone will. Yeah, they can they can read that as well. A chat is visible to them uh, to the stream, of course. Uh, I just said as a note for case of YouTube. Yeah, that would get that as well because they're getting the same thing that you see. Oh, all right. You know very well think of that. I can make fairy gold for you. Provided you have a bee sting, and a thread of mantis silk on you, of course. You'll need it if you really want to meet the Jester. Okay, I, I was just... I was just going to check back what she would need, but apparently we already have it. Here's your fairy gold. If you ever need any more, just ask. How did... These are good voice actor, but... Some, just especially fairy sound like they trying to re record for a children's storybook. Because they repeat uh, certain words a lot, like the fairy yeah. gold. Here's your fairy gold. You when you ask for me about your fairy gold. Yeah, more of the way they formulate the sentences. Like it doesn't like, seem like a natural dialogue. All right. What beautiful golden lights! Uh, there we go. We had to use it, and uh, yeah, this is a jester. Um, is he? Is he nude? So you finally found me. You took your time, didn't you? At last, another jester I can talk to. I was getting a bit bored. Uh, let's see. Fairies think of you as a little child since they are way older than you, and that is why they talk to you this way. <laughs> In a way that does make sense. I never thought of that. That, that does make sense. Wait, that's the... Oh, blind. That means they're condescending. Uh, sorry. I'm not a jester. I don't even really know what a jester is. I'm a dreamer. And a steamer. <laughs> What am I doing making excuses for myself? I don't hear it said that often, sorry. You're not a jester like me? Shame! No dancing in the morning light? No merry pranks together? Well, there's an old jester saying which goes, Why do you gather from the field? I hope the answer is to you revealed. So, what's my name? Notice the highlighted letters. Or Dorita? Is my name Dorios? I'm pretty sure you he would go through a, a whole selection of games. I don't know how long it would be, but until you could, would come to the correct one, which is, I believe, this one. That's right! Well done! You know my name! So, take this silverweed. You've earned it! And you passed Duna's test as well! And, hey, uh, yeah, don't think we have to interact with uh, the Golden Sumo <laughs> anymore. 
We had a long cloth, thank goodness. Come on. Uh, I get the feeling if I eventually, uh, when I eventually hit uh, Twitch affiliate, that someone would ask me to make that noise into a redeemable for whenever I fail at something. Okay. Just the uh, the shimmer of failure. <laughs> But anyways, we have the golden key now as well. So actually, let's take a look what's here. I don't remember what's behind this. And we already have all of the seals. And we have the silver reed. So we have everything we need for the shrinking potion to get into Cha uh, Jelen. So what is hidden here? Just quick, uh, just loot. And for the moment, it's only experience. Oh, hello, a steel key. I don't Looks recall blue. seeing a... I don't Wait, recall yeah. seeing a steel gate somewhere. Oh, but steel can turn blue. Let's see. Is there, no, is there another door here that I missed? Oh, yeah, right here. Try to remember how... I think you need to... If you want steel to turn blue to blue steel, you need to heat it up quite a lot. Okay. And this is... Stop! Not a step further. My name is Bromal, the Tree Guardian. And I won't let you go a step further. Not unless you got a pass on you. It's only for your own protection, believe me. The forest behind me is dangerous, and no one is supposed to enter. The goblins and the lack of fresh water in the forest have been sorely trying for us tree guardians in recent times. But I promised Cinever, the mayoress, that I would stand by my post whatever happened. So if you really want to enter this area of the forest, you need to speak with Cinever first. You'll find her in Sajelen. Right. Yeah, I remember yeah. now. There's a there's a fortress of goblins on the other side. Oh dear. And nice to see some better dialogue again. <laughs> Though how he talks about his post, I do have to wonder a bit. Do oh, do those? Uh, are you? Yeah, he's just going to keep stalking us. Do the forest. Yeah, do the tree guardians actually move around, or is he just, well, figure of, using figure of speech? That's a good question. And yeah, the mayoress, usually they can move to be terrifying. Mm, sorry? Uh, mayoress, I don't think I, I don't think you see that word used often. I thought it was just simply mayor, uh, uh, that mayor was a uh, unisex. It is, it is what's used mostly, even if uh, the person it's referring to or the person that has the title uh, is whether they are male or female. So even, even if it might not originally, it's be sort of become that. Hmm. Hi, Mel. You've brought me back all the seals of the forest. But I still need silverweed to make the shrinking potion you need to get into Tzajelen. Make sure you get me some. You have the silverweed, too. That means you've passed your first test and are now welcome to Tzajelen. Here's your shrinking potion, but you can only use it if you stand on one of the crescent stones here in the forest. You must only use it there, otherwise you'll be lost, a dwarf in the forest. An ant would be bigger than you. Yeah, some good advice. And we've hit level again, so up those go. And because because it seems that the other ones get a bit of points along the way as well, we've now hit enough mysticism to get the first perk there. Or maybe we already had that. Uh, I only just now noticed. <laughs> maybe maybe you raised it by those cubes you find sometimes. I think we've only found like two or three of those, so that's shouldn't have been enough to raise it. I believe it started... I believe all of them started at four. Hmm. But yeah, I think the... Uh, I think her line about an ant being bigger 
would be a bit uh, of an exaggeration, because, yeah, the models outside are here pretty decently sized, and again, uh, this, play this place is a bit quite tiny. Then again, it maybe the fairies outside of Chagellan use some sort of spell to make themselves more noticeable or something. Maybe? Or just basic, <laughs> for the sake of gameplay and being able to freaking see them. Then yeah. again, we did see them earlier in comparison to Melvin as well. Yeah, though they are a bit bigger compared to the video. <laughs> oh well, shenanigans and just gameplay being gameplay. And yeah, he doesn't shrink that tiny either. Was that a fart sound? No, but it sounded similar enough to one. <laughs> and yeah, welcome to Tsarjelen. Welcome to Tsarjelen. Okay, hers, hers icon is better. What the hell is that? Air? Is she's using a feather as a spear? <laughs> yeah. Uh, 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 I thought, what was to ask? Is that a guitar? Uh, there was one. For, wait, use a shell and a guitar as a weapon. For me, that would be weird. You look nice. I envy the women where you come from. We don't get to see many men, and not many of them are as smart as you. Why don't you spend some time with us? But you must visit Cinever, our mayoress. I bet she'd be more than happy to meet you. All right, the dialogue here is better. Uh, probably because they're not being so condescending now. <laughs> My name is Aruna. Um, I am the harpist, and I made all the harps here in the fairy forest, including the one we usually use to soothe the bridge troll. But we can't do that now, I'm sorry to say. And all because those mischievous goblins have stolen the harp strings. I can't do anything to help at the moment, because like an idiot, I've forgotten where I put my knife, without which I can't make any strings. I must have forgotten it somewhere in the village. And to crown it all, Gwen, my assistant, has disappeared since she went off into the forest with her tuning fork to tune some harps. And that dialogue was back again. <laughs> uh, can't say I've heard that one either, to crown it all. <laughs> I have. If I it's, only it's... had a tuning oh, fork and my knife, I could start dealing with things. Gwen, my assistant, has been captured by the goblins. Now I'm really worried. There are even rumors going around that the goblins have built a giant fort to the east of the meadow. What if they've taken Gwen there? Uh, I'd say it's a bit more than rumors if somebody <laughs> put up a freaking sign uh, pointing the way to it. Yeah. And also, take a look at the chat helium. Uh, yeah, I think Noon likes a certain fairy over here with her own portrait at the moment. We'll see if that gets reused or not. Uh, we can always uh, see if we can uh, set up a date for them. One moment of food, you're about to get glitched. Uh, no, you can maneuver your way around these little parts because the hitbox are a bit square. Let's see, what's inside here? Oh, hello. Good God, not again! Aruna is having problems at present. She can't find her knife to cut the strings with, and Gwyn, her apprentice, is missing. Luckily, she doesn't know I've lost her knife. You won't tell her, will you? Oh, and there goes the portrait being unique. And just for that, I'm going to steal some coins. And yeah, that... uh, I think they reuse many voice... Many times you reuse many voice actors. Yeah. And it's easy to notice this this voice actor is... Likely not take... Or probably taking the thing behind my head a bit too seriously. Hi! Age free you're enough. here, aren't you? Have you heard we're having our big fairy beetle races again this afternoon? Everyone here is really excited. The competitors are already tuning their racing beetles up like world champions. Have you ever seen a racing beetle? No? Then you've got to join our race. We'll find you a beetle. Go on, go over to Cinever and get your entry permit. I'll wait for you here. 
I will note, as much as this name Cinever sounds like a villain's name, she's actually not. Okay. Uh, the, that was dialogue was all over the place. I was unsure if she was being flirty or talking to... I, I, uh, that was Hello. a bit all over the place. And, um... Hello, Melvin. My name is Marina, and I'm responsible for growing and caring for the young saplings in the forest. But as you may have heard and noticed, all the water in the forest has just turned into a boggy, slimy, and above all, toxic soup. Now I haven't got anything to water my saplings with, and without water, they'll soon perish. I know that Erwin, the Mistress of Winter, still has some clear water in her pool. Please, take this bucket and ask her if she can let me have a bucket full. The faster you get back here, the more chance my saplings have of surviving. Okay. She has the best icon so far. You do dialogue and voice acting as well. I think she might be one of the few that has a unique icon. But that is going off of my terrible memory. Yeah, reminds me. Do you, do you remember to pet Inka today? <laughs> uh, yes. All right. Do you remember to pick up I Inky's laundry? She's a I cat. She doesn't have laundry. Also, just a little bit here with the lights. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I sent that a lot of good uh, light effects. No. Okay, I don't know if they, they are easy to make here, since they are a bit different from light effects nowadays. True. But still nice. Let's see, we'll, we'll get to see quite a bit of a light show in, in this place. Quite literally and fit, figuratively. Wait, wait. Have wait, you wait, heard yeah, yeah. of our great city of Jelen? It's the nicest place in the whole world, honestly. But to reach Jelen, you must cross the Great River, which, unfortunately, you cannot do at present. Jackal, the troll who guards the bridge, won't let anyone pass. Which means we don't get any visitors at the moment. That's a shame. You would have really liked it. But Cinnabar, our Maris, is dealing with the problem. Uh, I was saying, is, is there a concern of epilepsy warning? Uh, not to that amount, like uh, last time, no. Thank goodness. Again, I don't suffer from epilepsy, but bloody heck, my eyes do get annoyed. Yeah. And I may get a headache at worst case. Yeah, speaking of both of that, uh, I have my new glasses on now, finally. Uh, they, well, I could, I was, <clears throat> I was messaged I could pick them up earlier today, so I went and did that. Uh, after forgetting, I went. <laughs> the funny thing is, I went to the store area uh, specifically to go pick them up, as well as get some food for work tomorrow and other things. And when I get back home, take a guess, I forgot to freaking to pick up the freaking glasses, so I had to go back out again. Oh, for love of. <laughs> Welcome, Melvin. My name is Cinever, the mayoress of Tsa Jelen. I've heard you're very interested in our life and history, and would even like to help us with some of our present troubles. That's very nice of you, and in return, my extensive library is always at your disposal. I've got a very good book about Jackal, our bridge troll, for example. He usually protects us against unwanted visitors, but at the moment, he seems to have gone mad and won't let anyone through. But perhaps we could start with the most urgent matters first. Marina looks after our plants here in the village. She needs fresh, clean water urgently to save her saplings from dying. Please help her, but don't forget to come back here afterwards so we can continue our conversation. I am unsure about that dialogue. The voice acting was good, dude. The dialogue was a bit... I, uh, that was a bit 50-50 on. And, yeah, people might have picked up on it, but the... <laughs> <laughs> the bridge troll Jackal, uh, well, Jackal and Hyde. Uh, oh. <laughs> Let's see, Cinnabar's notes on the Jester. My parents told me stories about the Jester of the Fairy Forest. I think our Jester is the only one of its kind in all Gothos. 
He's usually hiding somewhere in the wood behind sparkling golden lights, which are designed to make anyone visiting the wood who does not know what uh, who does not know what they are curious. But you can only see the jester if you have some fairy gold. To summon him, you must throw the fairy gold at the golden lights, and fairy gold is not easy to find. So the jester is another protection for us because he alone gathers the valuable uh, silver weed, without which no one uh, no one could get into our towns and villages in the trees. Okay. And yeah, that was enough. <laughs> uh, usually we'd stream an hour later, of course, and that was the half hour alert to stream going off on my phone. I what? should correct that. Story of the Tree Guardians. Okay. Would you like to find out more about how the Tree Guardians came into being? Yes. Like the bridge trolls and Jester, the Tree Guardians have always been an established part of the forest. Above all, they guard the entrance to the fairy towns and villages with no weapons or defen defenses of their own. Sometimes the Tree Guardians use only their strong branches to hide the crescent uh, the stone runes at the entrances to the fairy villages. But sometimes these trees shake off, like ripe fruit, on the wanted guests who want to climb them to enter the heart of the fairy kingdom. But if the trees have been weakened by storms or by a lack of water, members of other races sometimes get a glimpse of the wise face of the old tree. Of the old tree guardian. Okay. okay. Interesting. I guess that answers us how they, what they do. Yeah, they, they, it's literally in their name, they're guardians. Yeah, but they are not doing much. Like, clip it, they shake me off. Turn it through, they hide the gate. That's it, they not, uh, they're not the, exactly the most active of guards. Well, it does sound like they could slap somebody quite hard if they'd wish to, if they can shake them off. If they can move True. that much. True, but they're still stuck on the ground. Yeah. The story of the trolls in the fairy forest. Would you like to know how Jackal came to the fairy forest? Jackal is just one of a long line of bridge trolls who have always been in the fairy forest. The bridge trolls' job, together with the fairy princess, is to control access to the inner forest and hence to Jalen. So Jackal is the guardian of the bridge and protector of the fairies all in one. If he doesn't like someone, uh, someone, he will refuse to let them over the bridge. But to enemies of the fairy folk, he has been known to do worse. As trolls have a short fuse and are easily excitable, the fairies play the troll a melody on the a harp each day to soothe him. As far back as anyone can remember, playing music on the bridge has always been part of a uh, fairy culture. When one bridge troll dies of old age, a new troll takes over, uh, takes over overnight. No one really knows how this close relationship between the fairies and the trolls came about. All that is known is that there must uh, be a magic link between the trolls and the harp in front of the bridge. Another hint to you, well, get the harp fixed. Okay. Denifer, Mayoris, a short treatise on fairy gold. Manta silk threads are a very useful raw material in many ways. You can make many wondrous things from them, such as our amazing fairy gold. We need fairy gold to call up the jester of the fairy forest. To make fairy gold, along with mantis silk, you need a bee sting. If you give both of these items to a friendly fairy, she can make gold from them. But not all fairies have the right or knowledge to make fairy gold. Okay. And the music has gone. And probably because, well, this is... <laughs> this is uh, the mayor's house. I... 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 Go ahead. Your mother never told you to not walk on tables or jump on tables, even? Uh, maybe. Oh, no, 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 you're just doing that to spite me, aren't you? Uh, I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> okay. Chajelen yeah, is pretty small, um, but I believe the, yeah we will be headed for Jelen, which is uh, well the, basically the fairy capital. So, finally, someone has managed to gather the three seals, which those frivolous young women lost in the forest, and bring them back to Duna. Hopefully, that will cheer her up a bit. She's been very quiet since the river poisoner returned. 
what? That, that was a bit better dialogue. I don't know why I'm criticizing Praise dialogue so much. Normally I don't, unless I'm either impressed or if someone sticks out to me. Uh, oh, we got a new messy insert. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Hello. Yeah, he did get, get, get a bit cheeky at times. What the heck are those? Oh no! The... Centipedes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, it takes a bit for get Drakir to fall back to Swedish. Yeah, I don't know what they were called in English, but we call them Tvekhattar. Based on the damn pincers on the bomb. And, uh, uh, yeah. Cent centipedes, I believe it is. Oh, those are not centipedes. Hmm. Okay, they're close enough. And hello. There's the knife. I don't know that they can paint quite hard. And if you're not lucky enough, you may need to go to a doctor to get them removed just because they can paint so hard and leave it stuck in you. Well, yeah. it runs off. And I think I've I heard of that. Run. Yeah, here's the thing. I had a, they can sometimes hide inside raspberries. Okay. This is probably one of the more recent. I have a re reaction for I remember just picking some raspberries, then all the day that suddenly just like one of those damn things crawl out. In, yeah. Yes, I got the upscale by bug, but yeah, people who have seen those bugs and know what they can do have all right to be scared by it. Yeah, bugs might be, well, bugs, but that doesn't mean they can't fuck us up. <laughs> like, there is some truth to, to the David and Goliath story after all, but <laughs> if you change David into a freaking bug... I did not eat the raspberry or the bug. I dropped them both <laughs> in sheer panic. Or but let's drop them more through. Yeah, I wouldn't touch I guess, that with a ten foot pole either. Probably not I even a twenty foot case, one. I think it's more for my early days of yeeting something. <laughs> <laughs> but also there's another thing that I'm sure they are true or not, but these bugs. Uh, at least in Sweden, reputation of crawling mm. inside your ears. Uh, that myth uh, is over here as well. With spiders or those? Uh, those or at least centipede-like bugs. Yeah, I don't know if they do it to living people, but I, I will not be surprised if they've done it to dead people. This probably could start the myth. Uh, could, uh, could be, yeah, and I very much doubt you know, living people <laughs> would have. Uh, humans tend to have be you pretty heard sensitive that still. Some nomads have set up camp yeah. close to our village. They are supposed to be so nervous that they haven't left their tents for days. Uh, what scare babies? Well, they can't just fly away from the goblins like we can. And now what for the, the heck last was building. That? Hmm? The, uh, the, something about her weirding me out. I don't know why. <laughs> okay, let's head out of here, get that bucket of water, and then we should be able to progress. Let's see. I believe the upper entrance is to the frozen lake. So let's on that. Uh, yeah, let let's head on over there. Actually, let's. Does the druidess have anything more to say? Well done, Mel. You've performed all the tasks I set you. Now go and flirt with the fairies in the village. <laughs> Wait, what? <sighs> go and flirt with the fairies in the village. Uh, I think she might have. I think she might think that uh, Melvin is here for different reasons. <laughs> I again, people. I don't think there's a single fairy male around, so... Yeah. I will say this again, for the sake of the meme. Age free and up. 
And I was yeah. correct. Oh, so this is ice. Okay. Yep, it's a frozen lake. Uh, and the each reason behind it. <laughs> uh, oh, God. <laughs> Stranger, I suppose you're Mel, the young man all the fairies are talking about. My name is Erwin, the mistress of winter. I make sure the winters in the fairy forest are nice ones, and I also look after the plants around here. Unfortunately, that's rather difficult at present, because the forest is threatened by a dark power. We are afraid the river poisoner, a ghastly creature from our mythology, has returned to destroy our forest by poisoning all the waters and rivers. In the long term, this will threaten all the life in the forest, and I can't do much about it as I have to use magic to shield my pool, which is the last clear water from the earth. But my magic only works if I'm nearby, so I can't leave. But I'd be happy to give you a bucket of fresh water from Marina, and take this blue ice flower of winter. Keep it carefully in your rucksack. You'll know when you need it. I think Noon thinks someone's cute, judging by those emotes. Yeah, most likely. And I like the uh, winter favorite here. Nice design yep. and good voice acting. What a strange book. I don't know what language it's written in. Let's see, the druids in the fairy forest. You Would you like to know why Duna lives in Stonehenge? Okay, let's see. As well as the mistresses of the seasons, there is Duna, another druid who looks after the fairies. Duna lives in Stonehenge, an ancient mythical place. There she says she can gather her forces best and is also the first to find out if anything threatens the forest. Without us druids, the three guardians, the bees, Jackal and Jester, the dainty fairies would be unprotected against anyone entering their magical world. And we all know why these delicate beings need our protection. The Archmage could never protect the fairies alone. He is much too absorbed in his own magic. The Archmage? Who is that? And also... Ah, message from Newell again. There was a responsible goof flirt with the fairies comment. <laughs> Very strange. A boy... Oh, the story of the speed boots and the beetle race. Would you like to know how the fairies move like lightning, even without wings? The story of the beetle race and the speed boots. All fairies have wings, as we all know, to enable them to fly around. There was, although, one particular fairy who first came into the world around 500 moon cycles ago, and who was at a disadvantage. She had no silken wings, and so could not easily flit around the forest like everyone else. All the other fairies called her slow coach, and she was always looking for ways of making up for her lack of speed. The first idea she had was to travel on the back of a beetle, which worked well, provided the beetle was willing, and was even fun. And so she started the famous beetle race, races, uh, which the fairies in Chagellon still hold today. But to make herself even more independent, Slowcoach kept on working on all sorts of weird and wonderful ways of zipping around without wings. In the end, with the help of Duna and Erwin, the mistress of winter, she invented the speed boots. As their name implies, she used, uh, she used them to run really fast. Since Slow Coach died, her speed boots are awarded to the winner of the beetle race, although they are not much used to real fairies. Can you guess what uh, our next tool will be? Cakes! What a strange book! I don't know. Oh, a strange book, alright. <laughs> Erwin's diary. <laughs> 20 moon cycles before the start of winter. Okay, so. Hmm. So moon cycles isn't like a, isn't like a year in this world. Okay. Let's see. Still twenty months uh, till f at least twenty months between uh, winters would be quite a while because that would be. Uh, I, I believe on our world here, uh, a moon cycle is basically a month, so that would be. Yeah, 20 <laughs> That would be 20 months be uh, before winter, at the very least, or between winters at the very least. 
What the heck? Let's see. Something is changing in the Raid Forest. Either Amber, the Mistress of Summer, is ill and has not made the preparations for her season properly, or there is something more serious afoot. I will visit Duna in Stonehenge and ask her what she thinks. 19.5 Moon Cycles. Duna is also concerned because the Mantises are suddenly extremely aggressive and are attacking everyone, which makes ma uh, making Fairy Gold very difficult, apart from being uh, uh, yeah, apart from anything else. But she doesn't think Amber has anything to do with it. 18 Moon Cycles. We must arrange for the mistresses, the princess and Duna to meet. The entire forest is in danger. We discovered today that all our water reserves are being poisoned, slowly but surely. 17 Moon Cycles. I have little time to prepare for winter as I have to protect my pool from the, eff <coughs> from the effects of the poisoned water by using my aura. I've used magic to shield it from the earth, but that means I can't leave. Otherwise the magic barrier will not work. What are we to do? All right. Hey. I I do like that the they put in explanations like that, that they explain why these magical beings aren't moving around and doing things you know, themselves. Yeah, and she did also explain it herself, and yeah. I usually like that when they do explain the, to give a a reason explanation why they're not doing it themselves. Is that just saying the typical? I'm too busy. Yeah, it's that's that just makes sense, bad but... writing. Yeah, sometimes it makes sense when you already have a good idea what they are busy with. But then only because you know they're busy with something and you're seeing what they are busy with in the background and all. Yeah. But when it's not explained with the, why they're busy, and there's no hint what they're busy with, yeah. Bad writing. Especially if they don't explain afterwards. Yeah, uh, let's see. Where was Marina? I think straight ahead here. Uh, that's the... Oh no, Marina's... Okay, this way. I was starting to wonder myself because we went through this place uh, counterclockwise. Uh, yeah, and well, all of the saplings are here. There she is. Fresh, clean water. Wonderful. Take this old oak branch as payment from me. It's quite a special branch because it comes from one of the oldest oaks in the forest. That old oak is the head of all the tree guardians, and it can make any piece of wood quite special with its magical powers. This branch should always remind you of the power of trees. Excuse me, or I can make her look like kind of like a fairy Amazon. A bit, yeah. Yeah, she she, uh, she looks more like she she could have a fight compared to the others. Okay, well, she probably need to since she has to fly out those saplings to grow new trees. Yeah. It's a dangerous forest after all. For your next task, you'll need the trophy they give to the winner of the beetle race. But shouldn't you try and win the race first? Okay. <laughs> no pressure. Or you could, you know, just lend me the freaking boots then. <laughs> oh well. What if they don't fit? Hi, Mel. You back? Great. Now Cinever has given you permission. We can get started immediately and find you a racing beetle. Are you ready? Then follow me. Oh, yes. To steer your beetle, just use the cursor keys. The longer you hold a key down, the faster you'll go. Or try to turn the camera slightly as you go. I could give you a lot of other tips, but you'll have to find them out for yourself. And I believe this is pretty much where I started with <laughs> steering this game with just forwards and the mouse control. Oh, not the mouse, the, the turning controls. Because this thing steers like absolute shit if you try to use that. <laughs> and like this, well, it steers like a freaking car. Also, Mel, I... <laughs> 
<laughs> I hope you're comfortable on this thing, because otherwise you won't have anything to, well, flirt with the fairies with after, and... <laughs> the point of us may like forgot that. <laughs> oh, come on! Uh, I'm, I'm guessing that's the honorary participant who's take, uh, in the name... In the name of Slow Coach. And, yeah. Clearly, you know, we go a lot faster, so as long as you don't bump into things too much, or just get stuck, uh, you can easily win this. Yep. Do I have one criticism about this race? And that is? The sound. Even more rounds. I don't like the music, and I hate the bossing. <laughs> Go again. At least this is the only case where this happens in the game, if my memory is correct. And that should be... Nope. Still more. <laughs> Wait. Don't you take damage from those spikes? I'm not sure. I don't think they actually do anything. And hello again. And goodbye again. It, is it... Is the game like... No. Nah. Amazing! You've won the race! Okay, that um, was a bit late. Leave it's fairy. <laughs> it is, it is, her face looks good, actually. Melvin, we love you! You've won the race, uh, and these fairy speed boots. They'll make you a little faster, even without a beetle. <laughs> I still can't believe a little chap like you has beaten us and won the race. Oh, I I think I start to see why I have a bit of a mild annoyance with some of the voice acting of the fairies. I think mild. I heard them from very old kids game. You know, the ones that teaches you stuff. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Again, oh, I mean, three and up, so that could have been partially intentional. Yeah. Again, I like the fairies, just... Some fairies I like more than the others, for obvious reasons. And, yeah, e even without the flying, Melvin is still freaking shorter than the freaking fairies. <laughs> well, at least he has a bit more body mass. Okay, now we have our third item. Yep. Uh, Let's not hope that to hit anything important. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. And he ever just asked if uh, noon is jealous. And yeah, they really don't make you that much faster. So why exactly do we need them? Okay, now the races are over, but I still need your help. Our harp at the bridge is broken, and we can't calm Jackal the bridge troll without it. If only someone could repair the harp. Gwen, Aruna's assistant, was on her way there, but she has been captured by the goblins. Some of our spies have now told me that the goblins have built a proper fort to the east of the meadow. I expect that's where they're holding Gwen. Here, take this wooden talisman, and Brommel, the tree guardian, will let you pass. Once you're past him, watch out, and please do everything you can to save Gwen. Promise me, you hear? I know fighting the goblins is no picnic. You'll need to muster all your courage. The goblin fort lies to the east of the meadow. Hurry, please. I can't rest while I know one of my beloved fairy sisters is in the hands of ghouls and monsters. So oh, the boots dear. weren't really needed. Uh, wait, what? The boots weren't really needed. Oh, well. It does help us with getting around this place a bit fast, a bit faster, though. Uh, don't break it. <laughs> All right, the fairy meadow. I believe that was south, and then another. Though we can check the one, the we can check the passage across from us. And yeah, it's not, it's not like it. Turbo charges Melvin, but it is noticeably faster. See the bridge. 
Uh, let's actually check out if that connects to the... Actually, I don't think the meadow connects to anything except for one area. So that's a bit of a waste of time. Let's see then. It was this way and then the other, I believe. Uh, yeah. Then we need to go to the last of the gates that we opened up. And there is he again. Uh, he concerns me a lot. Okay. And here's the tree guard. Senator has given you a pass. Well, then you may continue. But if you go in there, watch out for the goblins. Only recently they made off with a young fairy who hasn't been seen since. I recognize his voice acting and voice. Sand again, I do. There are many voice actors I don't know the name of. Yeah, that happens a lot where you just. you, Your mind is just having that little irritating itch that I know this voice, I know this voice, who the hell was this voice, but without a more context or another hint you can't figure out who the hell it is. Yeah, and it's not many shows that you get to see the voice actor for. Yeah, the biggest issue with voice, I guess recognizing the voice actor is, you don't know the, uh, their face. Yeah. But when you have a, you have a celebrity you know the face of, and hear the voice like David Tennant, you will instantly know it's David Tennant. Yeah, because his voice is also very obvious. <laughs> yeah, and also he has a very memorable name. Yep, it's a, it's a name that lives rent-free in your heart, in your head, like a, a tenant. A moment, please. I'm just gonna go under this table mm -hmm. and scream. The fort is locked, so I'll have to try and force my way in. Okay, so that's why we have a way to get around. I do believe we get another spell here, one that is quite fun in open areas like this. We'll just need to find it first, and hello. <laughs> Luckily, they aren't too tough, especially when we can two hit them. Still, let's use a few of these few dozen health potions that we have. Yeah, we, I don't think we're going to be short on them for the rest of the game. Uh, 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 though that does raise a bit of. We know that Jackal is a troll, or, or a bridge troll more specifically, not that I think it might ma matter much, but what the hell are these things? Actually, I can probably check the manual, which is in front of me here. Uh, let's yeah, see. Yeah, I'm curious. And, uh, that's the first level, walk through, constitution, weapons, armor. Uh, so, let's so, see. ogre perhaps? Let's see. Troll riders? Okay, so they are trolls. Just means that uh, Jackal and his uh, kin are well, more specific. Uh, a more specific type of troll. Well, I can say to you this. In Scandinavia, we even have books about all different types of trolls. Mountain trolls, forest trolls, river trolls. Yeah, you, you can't blame the Scandinavians for that one. <laughs> Okay. Even even magic in, in the beginning was named of trolls. No, oh, that's a new one. Like if you, you hear the term troll call, troll man, basically, it's basically earlier version of wizard. Okay. If you want to learn magic, you lo learn it for a troll. So the term magi, magic, is probably a bit more new or 
just seen as a different version of uh, throne magic. Like, <laughs> there's a whole different history about it that I probably should read a bit. But okay. yeah. Okay. I was starting to think that this place was locked off, or just blocked off. I'm trying to set this off. Never mind, it doesn't want to work. Uh, yeah, I thought this was blocked off, inaccessible, so let's have a bit of a look around. I don't actually remember how to get into that fort. And is this a dead end? Yes, it is. An invisible wall. Hmm. I guess me and Noon could make you a trebuchet and hurl you over the wall. Okay, for some reason this pit trap isn't working. <laughs> Let's see. Force our way in. Do we just have to start beating on the gate? <laughs> I think I remember some way to sneak in. The fort is locked, so I'll have to try and force my way in. Uh, well, that's the answer. Shoot it! Uh, right. Uh, well, <laughs> I guess they made their... <laughs> I guess they made their fort out of pass-through <laughs> yeah, woods. Wh what? He says he needs to force his way to... Wait. I tried the bomb. Actually, yeah, that, that might be it. Okay, uh, take a moment to swap Wait. these out. Oh, hmm. seems... Seems, uh... Noon agrees to deal with hurling you over a wall with a catapult. Okay, that was it. Oh, hello. Watch out, an intruder! Right, everyone, listen Holy. to me! You not be the first line of defense. I'll protect the rear. That's face. That the one speaks. You wait, say wait, that what? face, and then it, then it, <laughs> pans to Melvin's uh, uh, particular facade. I'll say. Oh dear. And also, what do you mean with smuggled? You lose. I, I am not familiar with this term. Yeah, it, yeah, I was just trying to say that uh, Melvin's face isn't all that pretty either. Oh, hello. And that was the shaman keeping the fairy in place. Uh, yes. You're a real hero! You saved my life! How can I show you my gratitude? Anyway, you must take my most valuable tool, my tuning fork, as a gift. And perhaps you can do better than me with the spell which I stole from Raga the Goblin Chieftain. It's called the Viper's Vortex. It hurls your enemies into the air like a vortex, confuses them, and poisons them too. It's a bit mean, but I'm sure you'll use it carefully, won't you? I must go back to the village now. Wait. Oh no! I think he just dawned on me. Hmm? Are some of these fairies bimbos? <laughs> uh, possibly. <laughs> it, it was an annoying trend that Venomous was around this time. Which, thankfully, is a trend that had died out. Almost. Really? It seems that killing off the chieftain got rid of all the other goblins as well. Well, the opponent made them retreat. And Alien, you want to check the e chat? Yeah, you little smuggard. Yeah, that's in response to what? Yeah, I wonder what is that response to and what, what, uh, what does that mean? I'm not familiar with the term. Also, this is the Viper's four attacks. Mountain Dew Twister? <laughs> uh, with, uh... Yeah, with, how, what, with the sort of stuff that's in Mountain Dew, I guess you could call it a poison. Uh, I'm so now suddenly happy that I don't... I've never 
ever drank Mountain Dew. I yeah. don't even think they sold in Sweden. Yeah, same here. Uh, it's it's even on the freaking cans, I believe, that it's not advised to actually think, uh, uh, to actually drink a whole thing in a single day. Like, that's seriously on the freaking can. Do not drink whole uh, in one day or something akin to that. Oh dear. As you're not a real jester and you don't know any others. I suppose you can leave me in peace and get back to being a hero. Okay, passive aggressive much. <laughs> anyway, let's grab those boots. Oh, let's grab those boots. Message for and the uh, senpai. Let's see. Uh, I have it tastes like yeah, Sprite, only less citrus flavor and more sweet. Okay. Again, it, so I, I, it could also vary a lot by which flavor you actually get. Sounds like I probably enjoy Sprite more. But then again, I quit drinking soda. I want to drink some fizzy drinks, but I'm more closer to flavored water. Okay. Uh, that's a bit too far. Here we go. Maybe it's just because I've probably been in this area most of the time with the, this game, but I really do like the music of the fairy forest. Oh well, yeah, it does look damn pretty. Okay, um, we need to return these here. And Thank also, Melvin. thanks for my knife and the tuning fork. Now I can make some more harp strings, but I'd also like to have a big party for Gwen. Can you take the harp strings and repair the harp at the bridge for me? I'm sure you can do it. Right, I would say, the other thing about fairies and elves in the game, especially fairies, is how people can get very creative with the furniture and houses. Yeah, like the, the seats out here being acorns and such. <laughs> yep. Also, uh... Yeah, just send the send the person you <laughs> send the person who saved your craft out to go fix something while you go boost it up <laughs> at a party with your friends. Freaking fairies. Yeah. Oh, let's see. I do not like Sprite. I rather drink soda. I think I drank half a glass last year. All right. Okay. Impressive. Uh, yeah, I prefer... I... Uh, there we go, that one does work. So Wily Coyote doesn't have to send that one back to Acme. Uh, I I prefer 7-Up uh, Cherry. There's a cherry? Yeah. Huh. Yeah, I... I have hard time to drink soda nowadays. Like, I usually get Coca-Cola at my grandparents, but even then I realize that it's just too much for me. So I repeatedly ask them to stop giving me soda because I don't drink coffee or alcohol. <laughs> so now I just get I've not only tuned crush. the harp, I've repaired it too. I had no idea it was so easy. I'm pretty sure it's not that easy, actually. Yeah. Or it could just be because it's a freaking magic harp. Yep, yep. Okay, just style on us and moonwalk in. <laughs> or I also said T-Pose, but they're not really T-Posing. At last, we can play the harp for Jekyll the Bridge Troll. The harp will play again. <laughs> Bonk. <laughs> that was quick. Yeah, there's out like a light, and then there's out like freaking Jackal, the witch troll. <laughs> uh. You saw it here, people. He just murdered a sleeping bridge troll. Uh. And now we get into the inner forest. Which, well, 
is obviously a bit darker and is going through things a bit worse than the outer area of the forest. Oh, and another level. And yeah, we do get a point each time, it seems, because this was seven last time. So just keep pushing it into strength to <laughs> turn it into a freaking berserker. And Okay, two zero hits there in a row. There we go. Now we can hit for 32 damage. 35. Okay. Now let's deal with this weed. Come on. Now then. Which ways can we go? Uh, hello, fairy. Serena, assistant to Dahlia, the mistress of spring. I, I was busy out here in the forest and completely forgot what the time was. Then I cut myself on a branch so I can't fly. Now I must get back to my mistress as fast as I can, but the way runs through this maze full of mantises. Oh, please chase them away for me so I can get back home. Can't fly. Well, she, she said she hurt herself, she can't fly as fast. Yeah, likely that, or can't fly as high, but still, she <laughs> she is just hovering around over there. But, yeah. Exterminate quest. Just get rid of all of these things. And I do I believe they mean every single one of them. Oh dear. I kind of wonder where we get the next weapon. Mm, I think we stick with this maze for a decent amount of time, actually. Okay. Like, I remember... I remember at least one other weapon. Uh, a hammer. But I believe that's gotten in, in the next level. But there might be some... And there might be something else. Google oh. hmm. makes my head foggy. Yeah, yeah. I don't get foggy from too much Google, but I I just feel weird from doing a go cola. Yeah, I'm, 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 hmm? I'm not as vulnerable to sugar. I believe at least to myself, but I do notice. Uh, I do notice a change if I go a few days with uh, without or just with a low amount of sugar. Not that it's not that it makes me hazy or something when I have too much. Uh, oh, hello. That seems. Yep, that can be walked through. Just For that me, it does like... have some sort of effect. Yeah, same here. This is as I got the, had the. Such uh, sugary drinks in a while. That I was feeling weird. Uh, it was like, um, like I get a power rush, sugar rush, probably just feels unpleasant. I actually got rid of it. <laughs> like I don't get sick of it. I just feel like too much, too much energy. Yeah, like like when it, oh, that's a bunch of them. Uh, like when I had that you know, Red Bull. Yeah, I, I, and it doesn't get make me aggressive like Red Bull does to you and that little. But if that that does make you aggressive, I promise you stay away from it. I, I had tried an energy drink called Cola, and I told you before. Was a day when I forgot to take my medicine. And yeah, my twin brother gave it to me, and I was extremely hyperactive. <laughs> uh, that reminds me of uh, something I'll link to you after we're done here. Uh, an old song. Uh, oh, Scott, all right. I thought you were to send me that this squirt from over the hedge. Uh, that, no, I mean, not that hyper. 
Oh, you knew who, who I'm talking about then. Yeah, I've forgotten his name though. Same. And for those who don't know, I'm talking about a squirrel in an animated movie that as quickly drinks an energy drink. For him, time stops. It doesn't completely stop, but it goes at such a crawl that it might as well be. And I think I remember the name now. I think it's Remy. Yeah, it might be. Yeah, yeah. yeah the, the movie is Over the Hedge. I believe they actually made a series from that as well. Though Wait, I'm not sure it? if it was any good. I... I did not know that. Then again, it seems they make series without much people noticing, like... I have you heard of the movie known as Evolution? Uh, yeah, that had a series as well. Yep, and I would read love that last year, and I got very surprised. <laughs> and apparently it was good. I can't speak to that, as I haven't seen it, but we could <laughs> we could give it a try. Uh, yeah, we could give it a try. I, I do know that it's, it is short. I don't know if they only made one or two seasons. Yeah, as is usually typical. I also do know that Evolution was supposed to be a horror movie first. And I'm pretty sure they turned it into a comedy, or a comedy horror part way through. Yeah, thanks for actually saying it's probably better we could turn this to more of a comedy. So they went with the suggestion, do the original director still feel a bit unhappy they didn't go full horror, but uh, it still was a success, and the people doing the movie loved it. No, no, no! I'm not setting foot in that maze! I'm sure you've missed a few mantises! Okay, that's something that can be clipped. Oh dear. Let's see, where are these mantises then? It doesn't give us a counter of how many there are, though. Let's see... I don't think many games at this age this was made had those. True. Hmm. Let's see, I didn't see or hear any there. There must be at least one still somewhere hidden. And, well, it could have just been moving around, because they they are mobile. They don't just sit in one place. Oh, there it is. And is that the last one? Doesn't look like it. Let's, let's actually go Wait. take a look here, if we can. I heard something. Yep. <laughs> Um, did, you, did you eat sauerkraut or shit con carne? Hello, Melvin. Nice to meet you. My name is Dahlia, and I am the mistress of spring. Sarina, my assistant, can't find her way through the maze. I would gladly go and help her myself, but my powers diminish when I get too close to the river poisoner. Can you help her? I'd be happy to see you again after that. And more bow chicka wow wow. <laughs> uh, yeah, there's oh, no dear. way you can convince me that these fairies don't breed by just uh, having fun with shrunken visitors. <laughs> Let's see. Goblins and Gorgors. Extracts from a study. Would you like to find out what uh, two different species have in common? Or what two such different species have in common? In the okay. fairy forest, the goblins are always up to mischief, but since the river poisoner returned to the fairy forest a few moon cycles ago, and has made this destructive influence you know, has made this instructive influence known, even the goblins have become much more aggressive. While they used to be just a nuisance, they have now organized themselves into military units, even built a fort, and are attacking strangers and fairies alike. But now they are not just attacking on foot, but riding uh, giant gorgors. Okay, so they're not trolls. The leaders of the goblin tribes were quick to see the potential of, such, uh, of these gigantic but usually peaceful beings. Now they train Gorgors from birth to be berserk fighting machines, trampling and crushing everything which gets in their way. 
And even if you actually manage to bring these towering beasts down, the goblins riding them leap off and attack viciously with their spears. Together, these two opponents seem invincible. Um, I'd say a bit different than that, seeing how many we've already killed, probably a dozen or so. Very strange. Oh dear. And I get the feeling that each of these outer shelves are going what to have... a strange book. Yeah, nothing on them. Records of the Lost Spring Oracle. Would you like to know what is coming uh, to the fairy forest? A long, long time ago, before we fairies really settled here, there was an evil creature which threatened to destroy all the life in the forest. No one really knows exactly what happened then, but it often crops up in the historical and mythological records from those times. There must have been a major war on Gothos at the time, and there was, are also references to a river poisoner. From what we know, it was apparently one of the most powerful and evil enemies of that time, and now it has returned. And with it came all these horrible beasts which, now make, you know, which are now making the forest unsafe. But the Spring Oracle has told us a bold young hero will appear, who may be able to drive the evil from the forest. For this young stranger, you know, for this young stranger not only has the freshness of youth and the hope for the future, but also the wisdom of generations long past. Okay, another prophecy. Symbiosis of the fairies and the bees. Would you like to know what binds them? Here in the forest, the bees and the fairies learned to work together many moon cycles ago, as the fairies had no weapons or magic to defend themselves and were very uh, much reliant on the archmage as their only protector, the mistresses of the seasons and Cinever, who was once a princess at the time, sought to protect themselves at all times, even when in flight, and all decided on the bees. The bee people uh, needed safe places to breed and flower gardens so they could concentrate on making honey, which the fairies could easily offer them. So the fairies wove special beehives from the be uh, for the bees in Jelen and Chajelen and made uh, them as pleasant as they uh, could. In return, the bees and their rather more aggressive colleagues, the wasps, said they would swarm out any time a fairy was in danger and needed protecting from an enemy. Moreover, they supplied the city and the village uh, with the sweetest honey imaginable. Now that's what we call teamwork. Right. Sounds like good teamwork. Yeah, and that also explains why the bees went for <laughs> went for Melvin when he first appeared here. Now then, where are the last of these freaking bugs? Oh, I can hear one. Yeah, I did there say you heard one. Ah, there it is. So um... Can we hit it through the wall? Yes, we can. <laughs> there we go. Okay, at least it tells us when we are done. Oh, you're a valiant warrior. Now I can finally go back to Dahlia and tend my wounds. Take this kiss as my thanks. And look after yourself. And should you ever visit Dahlia, my mistress, I'm sure she'll do you a favor as well. Age free and up. <laughs> I feel so that this game is so heavily mislabeled. Uh, oh well, all the more fun for us. Um, yeah, this, no, it, oh, much exit. of them all run mind that it can easily go over a child's head. Yeah. And, yeah, only noticeable if you're grown up. Uh, besides, well, the giant's... <laughs> the giant wall of splattered court and blood and rock that we found last time. Oh, That's oh, a yeah, bit more I, on the nose. I must, I, must, I must think of more of the sexual innuendos. But, yeah. Yeah, the... Blood and stuff. Okay, yeah, that that one should somehow not gotten past a uh, e, e three and up. Hello, Melvin. Of course, I remember my promise. In return for your efforts, and because you've saved my faithful assistant Serena, I'll give you one of my flowers of spring, and this magic amulet too. It will strengthen any spells you cast, so you'll be an even mightier magician. Hurry, Melvin. You are our only hope. Obi Wan Kenobi. <laughs> I knew it. I knew you would make a Star Wars joke. 
what you have to and see for yourself. Uh, that we now have a magic amulet which upgrades magic spells. It doesn't, uh -oh. well, like the ring, it, like the life ring, it doesn't really say specifically what it does, but uh, yeah, having a whirling vortex of death to be even stronger, uh, that's good in my book. I'm still worried. Now, how the hell do we actually continue here? Or is Jelen on the, an island in the lake or something? Also, I've tried multiple times to jump over these, and as you can see, they just have uh, extended wa invisible walls above them. So there's no shortcutting. Oh, that's probably going to be a bit annoying. You can hop over broken walls, though. And find a sneakier way out. Okay. Nice. Anything lost else from you? Oh, you're a valiant warrior. Now I can. Okay, nothing from, new from her. So let's go look for Jelen then. Which now that I think I about it, problem. sounds a bit like a mixed, like they mixed jelly, like a royal bee jelly and melon together. I beg your pardon. Have jelen, melon and jelly mixed together, I think, or that's what I'm guessing. Yeah, I get the like honey jelly thing. I get that, but I don't think we've seen it in signs of melons, unless you mean. Oh, hey, okay, I'm gonna bonk no, you. No, not that. That's you <laughs> coming up with that now. No, no, I'm gonna bonk you. Nice try, you go try and blame me. I knew you too well. Or do you mean honey melons? Mm, I don't actually know how or where honey melons grow. And Same. there I've we go. Honey melons. I... Yeah, yeah I've for... tried the honey melon. They're really sweet. Uh, to confirm, there are those yellow, slightest green melons? Mostly yellow, they are... Okay, I guess like it is. a spider web on they top of them? very sweet. Oh. They are almost... They, they don't taste like pineapple, but almost as sweet. Okay, we have, we have those. I have tried those, and we just call them sweet melons. I think honey melon and sweet melons are two different fruits in English. I'll have to look up. Yeah, I, I yeah, this is a case. Uh, it's probably good to, to double check. For sometimes a fruit can have two names. Remember, you don't have wings, so never try to jump over the terrain. You can use the ropeways to get from one platform to another. To get them moving, hit the blue bell flowers. This. It is a both curious and uh, interesting to see that they have you know, made ways for non-flying creatures to get around here. But then again, uh, we have also speculated that they rely for on visitors for reproduction. So it wouldn't really help if every visitor had a good chance of falling to their death. <laughs> yeah, and probably give a reason to why they keep telling... Uh giving the wool in the windows and why the druid has said uh, go ahead and go and flirt but it, it, it is a bit a weird encouragement yeah and let's see Jelen is actually big enough to need signs to well, tell the place around we have okay beekeepering that way uh, leadership that way and Hello, hello. All over Jelen, there are little signs to help you find your way around. And there are bell flowers you can use to start the gondolas of the little ropeways moving. If you can't find one, just fire at the bell on the other side. Just oh, the topic no. we're talking about. Uh, wait, wait, what? Yeah, we were just talking about the signs hanging all over the place. There are rumors going around oh. that really terrible things are happening in the dark forest. What happens if the poisonous mist reaches our town? 
Mm, yeah, we got a glance of that poison mist a bit earlier. Okay, I'm just checking around all of the buildings because some I remember some of them having stuff hidden behind them. So that's why I'm going around each of them. That just leads back. Yeah, that just leads up there, which I don't think we really need to go to at the moment. And let's let's double. Actually, no, we're back at the start. So let's just head inside. All right then. Over there, at the stick roulette, that's Fiona. She really loves games, and none of us has managed to beat her at the game for weeks now. And she's talking about that there. Do they have a casino? Have you heard of the Dark Forest? There are strange and terrible things happening there. Maravin, the mistress of the Autumn, whose kingdom it was once, cannot do anything at all about it, and ended up moving here to the city. Now she's staying in a hotel. Okay, that's just something a bit funny about that. Yeah, I, it, it should not be funny, but it's still funny in a way. My name is Fiona. How about a game of stick roulette? It's really great fun. Well, I like it anyway. You have to get three identical symbols in a row to win. Quite simple, really. Let's play for something. I know. If you win, I'll give you an amazing magic wand, which the great Horpak lost when he played with me recently. Oh, well, that's an offer you can't refuse, isn't it? Well, if we're not making a bet ourselves... Okay, let's get started then. I'll show you how it goes. Oh, by the way, did I mention that no one has beaten me recently? <laughs> not even the great Horpak. I'm just a good luck fairy, I suppose. And don't worry, there isn't a there isn't random chance to this. I'll start. Let's see if my luck holds. Three in a row! Aren't I lucky? <laughs> You'll have to match me. Also, it's not much of a surprise if you just hit all three of them equally hard, because they all spawn at the same speed, I'm pretty sure. Uh, no, they are not. Okay, they are... they clearly aren't now. Hmm... Looks like I've lost. Things aren't right here. This fairy is too powerful for me somehow. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Looks like you've lost. So forget about the magic wand. Also, just how yeah. defeated Melvin sounds there. <laughs> like he... Yeah. Uh, was she cheating? Uh, a little spoiler, but yes, she is. I'm recording a spoiler for that. That just looked so obviously painfully cheating. Either way, oh hello. Uh, easy guess who this is. My name is Maravin. I am the mistress of the autumn. I usually live in the dark forest with all its wonderful scents of moist earth and mushrooms. But everything changed a while ago. The water is foul. The plants are sick. All the plant life is slowly dying off and dangerous creatures are taking its place. No one can live there anymore, so I've ended up in this hotel room, and I don't really know how to go on. Okay, she looked very pretty. Especially the face icon there. It feels like they gave the best artwork of the fairies to the mistresses. Yeah, they are... They are simply put a bit more important than the average fairy, since, well, they're, <laughs> they're elemental... Uh, yeah, mistresses. So yeah. I don't know if that actually means they have any direct connection to the elements, or it's just... <clears throat> uh, or if it's more of a inherited title or something. Uh, let's see. Is there anything well, around they, here? They do have magic. True, yeah. So they, they could live longer and have a 
sort of work. And the, the, one of the books did mention that the fairies don't really have magic of their own, despite being capable of flights. Yeah, I guess it's uh, very rare the fairies are able to use that kind of magic. Yeah, and that, that is a bit different than usual, because typically when you have fairies in basically anything, uh, they have magic powers uh, beyond being able to fly. Yeah, no, actually, we have we had you that fairy that grows stuff. Lana Cherry is our shopkeeper and alchemist, but business is so bad at the moment she's even cut her prices. Okay. Alchemist? Or they have some form of magic, then. Uh, no, alchemy wait, could al be described more similar to, uh, like, a mystical version of science. Like, there's still magic involved, but it's more controlled. Yeah, maybe we can hook you up a date with her. I can't find any bell for the ropeway on this side. Maybe I should use the bell on the other side. I'd need something to be able to hit it with at this distance. Hmm. Actually, okay, it reminds me a fun fact. Mm -hmm. Maybe this is definitely related to you, Helian. The reason we have Shemis today is simply because alchemists back in the day decided to change their name. Yeah. Just to avoid being burned on the stake. Oh, we missed somebody there. Hello. Apidia looks after our bees. She's a real expert when it comes to bees. Um... <laughs> I forgot on that the... line. What the heck was... <sighs> What the heck was that? <laughs> that, that? That sounded so awkward. Uh, uh, oh, got on the guest. Uh, let's see. Hello, Schnurksel94. Uh, thank you for showing up. Uh, <laughs> how are you today? Hello, Schnurksel. Also, I'm pretty sure we have to collect these things, if I recall correctly. I've heard you did really well in your fight with the goblins and mantises. Our respect! We don't see brave men here very often. Yes, they sound a bit more normal, and... Oh, we, we are fine over here. At least I am fine. Uh, yeah. <laughs> the eye might be a bit of a plum problem, but otherwise, <laughs> fine, yeah. <laughs> uh, let's see. What is in here? Oh, just... More closets to rob. <laughs> Bit of a disappointment. But oh well, not every building in a game can have, well, something important. So let's head on back and take the next path. That leads back to the previous one. She was the one talking about uh, the signs and such. We've already gone to the star. Uh, well, we already tried to go that way. But we can't... <laughs> the bell is missing, so we can't. So let's head this way. Uh, magic that way. So let's go this way first. Fancy looking. And there's somebody there. Horpak, the Archmage, held one of his light shows yesterday, even though the mood in the Dark Forest and the Fairy Kingdom is hardly what you'd call cheerful. But he's so stuck up, he doesn't care. It's just the stranger who visited him a few days ago upset him a little. Yeah, you don't see somebody play this game very often. Yeah, that's because it's, well, for one, it's pretty damn old. And also pretty pretty damn obscure. The only release, as far as we know, only in Europe. This machine looks interesting, though. What an unusual design. It seems to be a mixture of machine and magic. Let me fit something in here using my steamer screwdriver hands. One more gear wheel, and the thing would work wonders. <laughs> and immediately Melvin starts screwing around with someone else's property. And here we have the mage. Hello. Who are you, then? Please allow me to introduce myself. Horpak, the cleverest wizard of our times. I specialize in healing and antidote potions. In fact... I could actually make a potion which would restore the river completely. 
An antidote potion, if you know what I mean. But to do that, I need my magic wand back, which a frivolous young fairy by the name of Fiona managed to trick me out of in one of her games. These fairies simply have no respect. They fail to realize my unique powers in any way. Just like those arrogant druidesses. Women. You sure you're, you're cool, just you... not a dighead? <laughs> yeah, but... Is he, he really a wizard and not just a very self-absorbed al alchemist? He's even missing the beard. Unless he repeatedly burnt it off. <laughs> uh, wouldn't be surprised where that. Uh, the recipe for the famous fairy cocktail. Would you like to try it? Uh -oh. Recipe for the famous fairy cocktail. Take a cup of milk, two thimblefuls of honey, two bellflowers of acorn syrup, a mashed... Uh, ripe yellow bone fruit, also known in memory areas of Gothos as a banana. <laughs> uh, put them in a large vessel, insert your magic wand, and recite a powerful mixing spell. Alternatively, if you're not a magician, you can put the lid on the vessel and shake it until your arms hurt. Warning, contains vitamin <laughs> contains vitamins. Oh, you said uh, the warning! <laughs> uh, you guys playing... And this isn't the first time that I've played you know, Techno Mage. I, I, actually, I actually played this game like over, well, probably over 20 years ago. It's one of the games that I grew up with. And the key over there, uh, well, our, our stick is basically that I play a game and then, well, we get his honest reaction on it uh, if it's a game that I've already played. And, well, if it, when it's a game that we have, that neither of us has played, yeah, well, we both react to it and see how things end up. Yeah, I, I bet this is cool commentator and extra brain. Let's see. Milk, honey, syrup, and banana. Uh-oh. Is this just a freaking banana milkshake? Are you, so, are, are you planning to make this? Um, Maybe. I knew you too well. I Let's knew see. you too well. Oh, the formula for the antidote potion. Formula for a universal antidote potion, an effective antidote for all kinds of minor poisoning. I don't think a river would count as a minor poisoning. First, you need a certain magic ability, first class magicians only. Do you need a flower of each of the four seasons, but they must all be fresh. Uh, and, and we recommend using the best magic wand available, as this formula must be made skillful skillfully with an L missing and quickly you will need to speak the traditional brewing spell for potions the potion is now ready for use and if you expose this potion to a friendly smile from a royal person it will make the potion even more powerful the universal antidote whoever takes this potion is then immune to any kind of poison how long it lasts depends on the skill of the magician who made it I get the feeling that uh, jackass over there wrote that one yeah, I, I wonder, is he really that famous and powerful? Uh, I think, <laughs> pretty sure not. The Fluffball formula. The easy way to decorate your home. Would you like to see it? I'm going to regret this, don't I? Take a small dish of finest sawdust or even grit, two pounds of finest spider webs, a handful of hair and a pinch of sugar. Put them all in a tall vessel and recite a medium strength vortex spell using the special magic wand for domestic use only. Then divide the mother fluff balls uh, so created into as many sweet little fluff balls as you like and use them as decoration in home and garden. Part <clears throat> particularly useful in scaring off unwanted mothers in law. What? <laughs> okay. Um... <laughs> that one. All right. Uh, let's just finish robbing this guy and then we'll head out. A gear wheel here in a fairy city. I wouldn't have thought anyone but Horpak here would know anything about machinery. And talking of Horpak, this gear wheel would certainly give his light organ a whole new dimension. I think I'll play a joke on him and build it in. The old man could do with a steamer in any case. Uh-oh. Uh, there we go. Let me out. 
Yeah, yeah. Don't smash the floor. Let's see. My magic wand. How do you think I can manage without it? I must have my magic wand back. Go. Hmm. Also, his face is how I would have uh, pictured uh, Mad Eye Moody from uh, Harry Potter before he got a visual <laughs> representation in the movies. Who? Uh, one of uh, a, a character in in the Harry Potter books and movies. Which of the movies? Uh, uh, let's see. First, when did he first appear? Not is it Prisoner of Azkaban. There, okay, it over it automatically moves when you get onto it completely. Uh, we're back here. It has been ages I saw in a Harry Potter movie, and the last one was with some arena mermaids and dragon. But from there, didn't see any more Harry Potter movies. Many me and my friends just uh, stopped caring. Uh, yeah, from what I've heard, the last of the let's see, we've gone. The last of the Fantastic Beast movies uh, was a bit of a disaster uh, without you know, Johnny Depp and such, and from you know, general incompetence or something. I haven't actually seen it, but uh, I have no real interest in going to see it either. Yeah, that Fantastic Beast was fun. And I forgot to made more sequels than one. Do this latest sequel seems to be all right? With Dumbledore, but I might be wrong. Uh, that's the one I heard worse of, and that is the second sequel. It's number three. Here in Jalan, there are many oh. ropeways to take you from one platform to the next. All you have to do is hit the blue bell flower to get it moving. But Amber always tends to forget to hang out her bells after the spring clean. But you can use your bow and arrow to hit the bell on the other side to activate the ropeway. Um, yeah. Take a guess Wait. at what our next weapon is going to be. A rose and banana? <laughs> no, bow and arrow. Uh, have we been here before? Well, did, it say, did it call a banana boo fruit? <laughs> Let's see. Yeah, we. I'm pretty sure we need to gather up those purple... Insects. I, I think they actually call them bees, which, uh, if your bees are purple, I think you have a different problem altogether going on. Hmm. Oh, I think I saw a Nickel Piga. Oh, not a Nickel Piga. Uh, oh, wait, ladybugs, I mean. I went <laughs> Swedish there. <laughs> uh, and if you want to translate Nickel Piga to English rawfully, I guess it would mean. Key maiden, maybe. Key maiden. Okay. And uh, I see someone is into her job. What the? Yeah, come on. <laughs> the lines don't even match up. Oh dear. What shall I do now? I look after our bee guardians here in the inner forest, but five of my best trained bees recently flew through the toxic mist, which comes off the poison sections of the river. Now they are ill, and just fly around in the city with no idea where they are going. Obviously, they can't find their way back to their beehives. I'm at my wit's end. Can you help me catch them? If I lend you this old honey glass, you may do better than me. Oh. Yay, that sounds like a problem. Yeah. Mary Fenn has tried to catch moonbeams in a ray class. Have you got one too? Then you try as well. Take the ray glass out of your rucksack and use it when you're quite close to the moonflower. Moon, ah, uh, uh, that's the moonflower. Looks like an enormous moonflower. Yeah, we can't interact with it at the moment. So yeah, let's go. Fine, let's go catch those bees, and we should probably be able to continue from there because well, we need rope. We need we need a bow and arrow to get to the last part of the city. Uh, first off, though, we need to find those freaking bees. There's one of them. And I think we've talked with you before. Will this, will this be a surprise? 
we go. Uh, yeah, one okay, that was surprising. Bee. Yeah, wait, wait, wait. Did, did you seriously put a bee in your pocket? Uh, I believe it's more that they are put in that jar of sorts, but even then, it's a question of how the hell they fit in there. Uh, I, but depending... Uh, okay. Oh, wait, the bumblebees are the fluffy ones. I'm sure regular bees are that fluffy. Nope. Hmm. Let's see. Oh, there's another. Come on. There we go. That's two down. Three to go. Uh, we are getting close to the two-hour mark, but like I said at the start, we'll be going for a few minutes extra because of the yeah <laughs> the kerfuffle we had with the window sizing. Um, the kerfuffle he had. I'm just a commentator. <laughs> Let's see. Was there one around here? Let's leave everyone gone this way. I think. Upsy daisy. Ah, yeah, this is a new area. And this is the alchemists. Let's see, where are you? Oh, another bookcase. Very strange. A okay, that's a bit of a bummer. Anything on this? What a strange book. Yeah, come know. on. No lore here. And well, they, they have designed some very nice houses. I am Loni Chera, mm. the alchemist of Jelen. I sell everything imaginable, such as potions, chalk, arrows, and herbs. Just like the nomads. Um... Yeah, weren't this... expecting that, huh? Yeah, I have recently seen some uh, shows use old fairies, but this one is the oldest I've seen yet. I'm pretty sure she has only one tooth left. Yeah. At present, I'm working on a very special good luck drink that I once made for Fiona. Depending on whoever holds the drink, whatever their situation in life, it will bring them perpetual good luck. Unfortunately, I'm having problems with some of the ingredients. I still need a small amount of fresh honey. And yeah, that's how she cheats. She has a, <laughs> a literal good luck charm. Yeah, uh, I had to say, that, that voice does not fit. Yeah. What a strange book. I don't know what... I will not be surprised if I take up one of the books that is just uh, Swedish. <laughs> I would not be surprised. Especially with apparently people claiming Swedish is the hardest language to learn, apparently. Okay. I'm I'm a bit skeptical. Uh, personally, I think that uh, Japanese or Chinese would be a lot harder to learn. Uh, uh, come I on. think it can more depend on the Who's trying to learn who? Like, I, I suspect a Dutch might have easier time. Uh, Dutch or German have easier time to learn Swedish due to the languages have similarities. But uh, maybe for an American and uh, some English folk, learning Swedish might get a bit harder due to we have some extra letters that they don't have. Come on, send that back here. But, yeah, again, I, I doubt Swedish is the hardest. Come on, there we go. It gets a bit picky sometimes with where you're standing. Hmm. Okay, let's try that again. I don't know if we have without. more than one language here. And some accents are so... Different from the rest of the Sweden that this is basically its own language. And then we have, of course... Stockholmer. It may be capital, but they speaks 
the most different compared to Sweden almost at some times. Especially in the youth where they speak in such extreme slang that they made a movie with Swedish subtitles just to <laughs> for anyone just to understand what they were saying in the school. Okay, yep. I had a feeling one of them was here. Come on. I'm just glad that this Stockholms I met did not speak like that. Come on. Actually. Uh oh, uh. <laughs> I will let you, you <laughs> answer that one, Hilian. Yes. <laughs> uh, let's leave that for after the game. <laughs> when we, we don't have a, a world to. Come on, I'm pretty sure we're standing in, right in the middle of its path there. Okay, that's three down, two to go. And yeah, very obviously, when we get all five of the uh, bees back, we get honey, so we get the good luck potion. So we beat Fiona, and we get the, and the wand back. And that's one still blocked off due to, well, no bell. Um, let's see, is there any... This way. Did we talk to you before? I've heard you did really well in your fight with the goblins. That might actually be the first time I've heard, heard the word respect used on its own like that. Oh. And the beekeeper is that way. Uh, uh, uh oh. I, I see what's going on here. Um, uh, Elian? Yeah. Do you have a bad sense of direction? I'm, I'm trying. Oh, well. We haven't. Uh, I'm trying to look around for the bees at the moment. So we, we don't uh, have to look right. for one left over at the blast end. I, I almost forgot about that. <laughs> for me, for the moment, it suddenly looked like. Is he lost? Yeah, <laughs> wait. Uh, there is one. And another fairy to talk to. That's... Right as it takes a turn. Come here, you. You're that is one annoyance with... Yeah, that's a, that is one annoyance with using sprites and such. It can be really hard to judge depth and distance. <laughs> okay, come here, you buzzing bastard. Have you heard the sad story dinner? of Heliana, our princess? She has fallen into a deep depression. Some people think it has to do with the mysterious stranger who arrived in our town a few weeks ago. They say he told her horror stories about the river poisoner. All right. Okay. Oh, we learned who Horpak was, and to a degree, we probably would like to forget who Horpak was. It is. But yeah, we also have a fairy princess. Yep. Oh. Uh, let's not attack the <laughs> the royal nurse. Oh dear. What can I do? What can anyone do? Look at my little princess. She is full of sadness. No one can help her. She hasn't smiled since the day she heard the river poisoner was back. There is an old story about a princess who was as sad as our Heliana. Someone is supposed to have caught a moonbeam and made her smile again. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, and now we have a, a depressed 
probably almost suicidal fairy. Ace and up, people. <laughs> yeah, that... Very strange. A boy? I feel like I should have a talk with whoever gave you that age rating. I also realized something. Hmm? I have seen this game before. Oh? Or, well, the cover. I, have, I think I've actually seen it in a pre-owned game store. Hmm. Oh. I did not buy it due to a fair look. I looked at it and I thought, okay, this is likely not gonna work on the computer, it looks too old, and I had a feeling it might be a bit too shallow for me when I saw the age rating. <laughs> and now it's gone and proven you completely wrong, on the latter half mm -hmm. at least. Yeah, do I probably, back then we'll probably not still not buy it. Simply because I will, will be good that it will work for the PC. And, uh, yeah, I think I would have not enjoyed some of the voice acting. Story of the Tree Guardians. Oh, would you like to find out how more about how the Tree Guardians came into being? Uh, okay. Da -da -da. Wait. Is this just... This is just a repeat of this... Okay, it doesn't actually talk about how they came to be, it's just what they do. What a strange book. <laughs> and again, it seems that half of these are going to be... Politics and Society, the role of the fairy princess? Would you like to know more about the social structure of the fairy kingdom? Uh, okay. <laughs> the fairy palace is the official residence of the fairy princess. Princesses are elected in elections organized by the mistresses of the seasons, uh, every fifty moon cycles, uh, any fairy can stand. Uh, uh, any fairy can stand, although no uh, one may be princess for two terms in succession. At the end of her term of office, the princess goes back to being just a normal fairy like anyone else. Although the princess does not have any real power or authority, she looks after all the main events in the fairy kingdom. The princess also has a special understanding with the bridge troll who controls the access to the inner forest. Any fairy may also bring her case and concerns before the princess. The princess also tries to help and consult the mistresses of the uh, seasons before giving advice on how to resolve the matter. This is one reason why the princess tends to be one of the older fairies and why any fairy can only be princess after 50 moo cycles. It takes a lot of patience and calm to deal with all the little problems and quarrels fairies have. Okay, Wait. an what? elected princess. Okay, okay. now I'm confused. Wait, hold on. How quickly do they grow? Uh, no clue, but we still don't know if... Yeah, I've heard... Hmm. It... Okay, I'm still not unsure if the... It could just be that the entire forest, it doesn't really have seasons normally, but just changes... Hmm. Now it... I, I think I'm going to stick with moon cycles being months for now. Uh, since, yeah, it would... Things would have gone pretty freaking slow if it was 20 years before winter that they started to notice things were going off. And then in less than three, they no, uh, in, it takes three years for them to really notice that things are going to shit. And again, it yeah, was but... poisoning. It's poisoning slowly but surely. Yeah, hmm. but election every 20 moon cycles? Uh, you need to be 50 moon cycles old? Let's just let's just stick with it. it's just a bullshit time measurement that they shoved in. <laughs> yeah. Look, them being so small, I could imagine makes them grow faster. But yeah, they, still. They are magical creatures after all. Oh, are they? Let's see. The Mistresses of the Seasons. Would you like to find out more? The Mistresses of the Seasons are a very important part of the Fairy Kingdom. They are wise druids and have a special relationship with the forces of nature. Each of the Mistresses is responsible for one of the seasons in the Fairy Kingdom. And as Dahlia, Amber, Merivan, and Erwin are very ambitious ladies, the Fairy Fairy Forest usually gleams even brighter with each new season. 
Here, when the mistress of winter, for example, lives in a pool, which is full, in summer and winter alike, with ice cold and crystal clear water, which the druidesses uh, use for their potions, ointments, and other, rem uh, other recipes. The mistresses of the seasons also supply the fairies with all kinds of healing herbs and medicines, and advise the very princess on serious matters. The mistresses have certain magical abilities, but only uh, use only use highly traditional earthborn magic are the conviction, unlike Horpak, the archmage, who lives in Jelen. He is a young he is a wild young man, a champion of the new magic, who often brings the scorn of the mistresses on himself through his perverted magical experiments. Merivan, the mistress of autumn, originally thought Horpak was responsible for the changes in the dark wood. But unfortunately, the reason why the plants are dying and the monsters are invading is not so simple. Okay, that makes me think that the mistresses are just naturally like that. All right. Though, I guess this also tells us that Horgaf is a self-acclaimed archmage. Yeah. Well, he he's likely, the, besides the mistresses, he's likely the only creature here that has uh, real magic, uh, besides natural in, in, inherent. Yeah, they call it new magic. Is a curious term. Okay, we need to find more of those bees, but we are at our time limit though, even with the little extension. So, yeah, let's call it here then. And as we look upon Melvin's Actually, it's probably more horrible on my end because it's stretched out to a 16 by 9 uh, aspect instead of the 4 by 3 that everyone else is seeing. <laughs> oh dear. Uh, oh dear, oh dear. Wait, what? Oh no. Huh? For, a moment, for a moment I thought I accidentally clicked something that closed the game off without saving. Oh, no, what's that was say? a minor heart attack. But no, I just hit something that's have the way for a moment. So right, let's put up a save. That's one less bonk. <laughs> and yeah. Uh, quite a bit of progress, but this was the only, uh, this has been the only time so far we haven't actually managed to get into a new area or a new level as the game uh, counts it uh, in a single stream, like I predicted last time at least. Yeah, and not much combat, but they had some combat, but most have been walking around and talking. Yeah, like I said, this area is more open like the, uh, <clears throat> like Dreamer and Steamer Town were. Though I think by the next upstream we will be able to get out of here. When that will be, though, we'll have to check. I still have to finish up a schedule for, you know, based on each of my possible shifts on when I should sleep, when, I, you know, when I'll be able to stream and such. Uh, <clears throat> though, actually, I'll need to double check. I think, I think I am, f I don't have a shift this Friday. So if that is the case, which I'll need to double check, as I said, uh, because of course that's true with a bit of a complicated system where they put up a s schedules on an online application and such. Uh, yeah, if I have Friday free, we can do a usual. Yeah, we can do a stream on our usual time on Thursday. Nice. Um, Saturday, I should have the weekend off as well. Should I'll add on? Uh, <clears throat> I'll emphasize. Uh, though I'm not sure if we can really do. Actually, we. Even, I know that this week and next week I should only have early shifts. And I was about to say that because of that I might not be able to stream on Sunday, but Sunday we stream early anyways. So that shouldn't be a problem. Yeah, it shouldn't be a problem. All right then. So, hope most likely we'll be able to continue uh, this next Thursday. Uh, Saturday we'll have hopefully more Monkey Island and another s showcase Sunday on Sunday. Uh, th that will actually be the 64th one. <laughs> yeah, uh, hmm. when are we to do more Minecraft? 
Uh, I pr we could probably try that on Friday. All right, it sounds like a good plan. Okay. For now, though, thank you anyone who has been watching now or later. Uh, thank you, Noon, for showing up and chatting along. I hope you're enjoying the show. Uh, thank you for showing up as well, Schnurksels94. I uh, hope you well. Hope you had the same. Uh, hope to see you again. Since there are few people who actually know of this game, to my knowledge, yep, Dobini seemed to recognize the name at least. So that was a surprise. And of course, thank you as well, Dorkir, as always. You're most welcome as always, my friend. <laughs> and yeah, we'll be returning to this Thursday, hopefully. And I've already, <laughs> I've already laid out the rest. Because I keep blabbering about that whenever I you know, finish up a stream. So, yeah. Thanks again for watching. And as well as anyone who may have been watching without you know, chatting or without an account for the timer up there to notice. Thank you all the same. And, yeah. Until next time, have a nice day. And until then. Be safe, folks.